Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Walking Dead World Beyond. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're picking up with Elton and Percy. Obviously, Elton's trying to be a little bit more positive. He's like, yeah, like, you know, we found Silas's stuff, but it's like, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything bad to me. We found Teresa, and I was like, Teresa? It's like, yeah, the, uh... The uh, horse, and it's like, yeah, she seems like a Teresa, which Percy's very pessimistic because he has a very pessimistic view just because, well, him and his uncle were out here, whereas Elton probably has a little more of a positive spin on everything, while it was just kind of like reading things from his mom's book, kind of keeping close to her, not kind of having to go through this alone, having people he could rely on, but now that family, that group is scattered, so hoping that they're okay, but Percy's just like, yeah, but with Huck with them, like, we don't know for sure whether or not everything's okay or not. It's just like, just like, but gotta be realistic about it, but he's the more, it's the interesting duo to put together because, like, El, El, like I said, Elton is like very positive, or at least tries to be, whereas Percy's just kind of like, yeah, I'm pessimistic, but that's just me being very realistic about it so we don't know where everything stands where everybody stands and they end up uh coming across two people it ends up being siblings dev and asha which uh the actress who plays asha is also uh in big sky she plays max which i always think that's so interesting not only when you're like an actor's in a pro in projects that are like close enough to each other but when they're airing exactly at the same time too i always think it's fascinating uh, obviously Percy's just like, no, no, like, let's go ahead and con them out of it, because it's most likely, like, they come from some area because, like, uh, their turnips are, like, so very, like, uniform that that means, like, there's gotta be, like, a something where they're growing it, and it's like, but it looks like they're the only ones here, so it might be easy to con, which Elton is like, no, 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 let's just ask them for any food they gotta spare, because it isn't just enough for them, it's like, right, we're potentially gonna find everyone, and they might not have any food either, so we got, got enough to, like, support, like, five people worth of food, and it's like, Right, but uh, Elton's like, let's just ask. So he presents himself and is like, hey, uh, my buddy Percy, he's in our... The moment he couldn't find... The moment Dev couldn't find Percy, I was like, he's waiting for an opportunity to strike. But Elton was able to convince them just to uh, give them food. It's just like, I love that he went about it and I was just like, what are you even talking about? It's like, yeah, apparently he's asking for food. So and it's like, all right. They gave him two terms. He's like, oh, that's good. It's like, what's your name anyway? He's like, uh, Elton. Percy? He's like, person, I thought you were friends. He's like, ah, well, uh, and he's like, no, 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 I'm sorry. Like, it's like, oh, they're a bunch of con men. Percy's like, con men, really? And Elton's like, no, nah, well, he used to be, and Percy's looking at him like, shut up. And it's just kind of like, no, he used to be, but this is, and they have to run, and I love it, and they're chasing after him, and at one point throws the hatchet at him, and then I love um, Elton like, holy shit, it was just turnips. And they're running, but then also they end up stumbling across dead who are like underneath the ground and kind of like foliage is kind of growing on top of them. So luckily Asha and uh, Dev ended up helping them. But also it's like he gets bit at one point, but it's like, no, I'm fine. Like the jacket protected me. And I was like, whoa, it's like cloth armor. And then Asha decides to take it for herself. And I love person. Glad thing, good thing she didn't like your underwear because that'd be pretty bad. But uh, it turns out they're the ones that we saw early in the episode, like, putting uh, flowers in the eye sockets of the dead. At the very least, it's Asha's thing. Um, but I was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting. Even person being like, that's kind of a little culty. It's like, that's a little weird. Well, we'll get into that later. But it's like, where are we getting taken to? And then there's, like, those, those hazard signs, which I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, wait. I was like, no, nah, it can't be. Like, the way the area looks, it can't be. I mean, I guess there could be radiation. But it's like, yeah, it's definitely anything Fear the Walking Dead related. Like I said, I... I, I do, I, I keep bringing it up every episode because I can't shut up about it because I like, like I said, knowing the time frame, but I feel like all three shows are taking places, not just in different places, I think they're all taking place at different times, like, I don't know about fear, I, I feel like fear isn't on the same time frame as The Walking Dead, even at, at this point in time, because I don't know how much time skipping they've actually, I mean, there have, like, from season three to season four, there was some time skipping, one to two was pretty instantaneous two to three or what i'm trying to remember did that pick up immediately after definitely there was time frame between three and four considering all that madison built up and then it was in the time frame after the stadium that couldn't have been too long after the fact but it is a situation of it is a situation of it, it feels like fear and the walking dead are like 
different like because like i said i think currently in the walking dead it's been like 12 years since the fall and this it's been 10 years since the fall and i feel like it's because also you have to count for the fact is that fear went all the way back to the beginning of everything uh, and that was in 2015 and the walking dead came out in 2010 so like there's at least a five-year separation so that's why i've been said this during fear the walking dead my uh review of the premiere like i think fear is at least like the information is out there probably i just haven't looked into it it's just like just my brain trying to like connect the time frames but i feel like it's been 12 years on the walking dead seven years on fear the walking dead and 10 so that's why i feel like there's such a disparity timeline wise i could be mistaken because there might be a lot more time gaps that i'm not really considering i know there was some time gap between five and six you know, so it seems like there's been a bit of time between six and seven as well, but I don't feel like it's been bit like years. I think it just feels like it's been maybe months or something like that. The same thing between five and six, I felt like months. Tangents and all that aside, um, but I, it, just the whole uh, like hazard and stuff like that made me wonder. But I was like, oh no, I was like, or is that just signs to kind of scare people? Like, they put the mask on, so I was like, I wasn't sure. But it turns out they were scaring the crowd. Like the moment like they arrived, so I was like, wait, isn't this the perimeter? Whoa! I was like, so they're uh, they're doing. Oh man, they're going to inadvertently bring uh, Elton and Percy to Felix, Will, and. Um, Iris, but it turns out, no, it was done on purpose, they immediately knew who, because it's like Elton person, she, he was like, wait, you know my name, it's like, they knew the entire time, it's like, yeah, we were going to bring you back, but then, like, Percy stole from us, so we just decided to have a little fun, and it's like, that's a sick way to kind of have fun, I'm like, you literally, I mean, I guess it's like, if I wanted to kill you, I would have, they are really good and trained, because, like, the way Dev handled himself, even, um, um, uh, Asha going for the legs, I'm like, sweeping for the legs, and then striking out their heads, I'm like, whoa, that's, pretty skilled even at one point in time she does like that i don't know what you call that like no a roundhouse kick she does like a roundhouse kick and one of them like yo holy crap um but it's like yeah like that's why it's like if i wanted to hit uh silas with the hatchet not silas uh elton with the hatchet i would have hit him but i hit the tree on purpose just to scare you guys a little bit it's like that's kind of messed up it was percy's like did not elton's like elton was trying to like not go about it the right way but luckily everyone's reunited you know and, and that's good but obviously, Elton getting a rundown about everything. Like, even on the way there, Percy was like, yeah, I told you, like, this world is a shit show. Like, you know, nothing's, there's not a lot of good in this world. But Elton wanted to keep that perspective and now finding out not only about Huck, about Hope, but also finding out, like, oh, their home is gone. That, um, that and even Iris's belief, it was the CRM behind it, like, that reality sinking in is, is kind of a, a hard pill to swallow, like kind of getting that thrown at you all at once. So, And Elton's over listening in because it turns out Dev and Asha are, are um, Indira's uh, children. And so like they kind of made the decision to bring them here. But uh, some of the people, some of the other head honchos in the place are just kind of like, no, like don't bring them here. Like you brought even more people. They're more trouble than they're worth. But like. Asha and Dev are kind of like, we started this place and then the CRM came along. It's like, screw them and their rules and just like their agreement. Like, the fact is, this is our, this was our place before it was theirs. Like, they came here after the fact. And so Asha ends up filling Elton in on a little bit about it. Like, their mom discovered this place. So I'm like, okay, so it's like a little, it's a weird, it's, I feel like, I don't know if this would be considered derogatory or not, but it's like, it's a very, like, hippie-ish commune. It seems like it's what it is. Hence why, like, Percy was kind of getting, like, those, like, uh, cult-like elements, but then praying and stuff like that over the bodies. Because, like, he's called, like, obviously they refer to them as empties, and she's like, empties? Wait, you think they're empty? And he's like, yeah. Like, it's like, we call them vessels because we believe their souls are still in there. At least by killing them, we're setting their souls free. And the whole flowers things is just, like, Asha's thing like it doesn't seem like anyone else does that but it's like the fact is like oh our mom found this place so it's kind of like maybe like a commune of sort for people to come together so it is like a very tight-knit community but then the crm came here after everything went down and gave them supplies and everything it's actually their idea is to put up the hazard signs and stuff to keep people away from like this place as well as like the research facilities like that's what the perimeter uh, you know hence the name and everything like what they kind of serve as as the perimeter to keep what the crm's like up to secret and just make it so that people who come like it's all for a show to be like oh this is a hazardous place or whatever so i did like that uh uh elton did try to be like okay oh, i get my like jacket back and she's like we'll see i'm like well, it'll be interesting to see whether or not he actually does end up getting it back i think he will but we'll see but um 
obviously there was the conversation between Iris and uh, Percy. She's like trying to clean up his wounds. Obviously, like he could see like a medic tomorrow for like the full like coverage of everything. But just knowing like, you know, it's like, right, too bad we didn't really get to enjoy like the whole presentation of what you kind of set up for me. So uh, he's like, yeah, sorry. Just like after what Huck did to my uncle, it's like, I get it. You know, because he actually does look at her. He's like, you seem different. Because I think much like them, like he saw like that light in them, that light that hadn't been dimmed. You know, and that ends up being something, we'll get to it later, but that's what, that kind of goes alongside with what, um, what Leo was kind of bringing up to Huck of just, like, that innocence of being children, like, that was taken from them, and it's like, the argument is like, well, you have to potentially find that balance of, like, they felt safe behind that wall, but now it's like, no, now they had to be forced to kind of grow up and, like, face, you know, what the world is and face kind of the ugliness of everything, even though that's not what um, Leo would have wanted for them. Like, they had to grow up too fast. And, because um, obviously you see the parallels between, like, you watching, like, Judith and the other kids grow up. Judith in particular, just, like, having watched her had to grow up and... Knowing what she's lost, lost her dad, lost her brother, her mom's gone right now, both of them, like, granted different circumstances, obviously Lori's like gone, gone, but Michonne's out there somewhere and she just doesn't know when her mom's going to come back and if she's okay, so it's like, yeah, you have to grow up and then you have to grow up even faster and, and, and you know, where, where things currently stand with The Walking Dead, so... I just think that's just kind of a, a the complicated thing that Leo didn't want for his kids. And now it's also like, but I think it's not just that, like, Iris lost a little bit of that hope in people now knowing like the CRMs behind it, but also like she killed someone for the first time. So I think that that doles your doles you a little bit. It, it dims that light and he just, he feels how different she is, you know, and it's like, but they, they have a second chance. It's like Elton, you and Elton found your way here. So she's like, I don't know where Silas is and everything with hope and home. But at the end of the day, you guys found your way to us. It's like she kind of wants the belief that, you know, everything will work out. Like we have a second chance now. So, and I think it probably gave her a little bit more hope that everything will work out. So on that, that side of things, going back to like with the CRM and everything, uh, we have the whole Huck and Dennis. And we get a little bit more explanation about their circumstances. Still not fully clear. Apparently Dennis did something back in the day and it basically got him in trouble. That's why he's on, like, contamination cleanup. But also, like, Huck was kind of, like, affected by it. And so that's why she decided to go on this mission. It was more so her mom's idea, but this is her way to kind of come back and be put back on active duty. And she does, like, end up... It's like, yeah, some of the report had to be redacted, but... Uh, what was it, uh, Colonel Bills is, like, happy with what you've done, so you get to, like, yeah, we're reinstating you, which she's happy, she gets to enjoy it, until Leo rips her a new one about, like, all that he did, all you did, it's like, obviously you lied, um, you took, like, that innocence away from my children, like, the roundabout way you got hope here, like, you lied to her, and now she's lying to me, like, how can I trust anything, you said, just bring me Iris and Felix, because I can't trust you anymore, you can't be trusted, and that does sit terribly with her because regardless of it was an assignment she has to pretend like she didn't get close to him but she did like felix was a friend betraying hope does suck because she did grow to care about hope and it's not just her iris um elton even feeling bad of like she's also the one that set silas up it's like yeah the kid has his issues but i set up an innocent kid just to do what i needed to do so of course you know once again she's still in the dark about what her family did like her mom gave the order well I'm sure the orders probably came from higher up, or maybe she's the one that just dissed out the orders herself about like the Omaha situation. It's like that, like that was your home for a while too. So those were people you got to know. So after hearing that conversation with Leo, well, Hope is adjusting to you know life there, and obviously she's giving her dad some ideas about how he should tackle things. But it's like, right, you're just trying to distract me. And he's like, are you not telling me something? And she's like, no, dad, just like trust me on this. He's like, I do trust you. It's like there's so much to handle. Like the, it was tough out there, and now trying to be here now, not knowing about Felix and um, Iris, and I think just the nature of everything, and just like trying to fit into like a normal world setting to some extent. No, because like during class, it's like, oh, here are these people talking about the outside world. Like maybe they do have experiences in the outside world, um, or maybe they've been behind these walls for so long. Maybe they don't know. 
that um just like the people in Omaha, but it is also that you know in the campus. But it was mainly like all this like theoretical talk about it stuff like that. It just reminded her of um being on the outside, and it's just like that's an experience. Like I think a lot of them haven't really. I mean, we once again we don't know everyone's story, so like even like Mason, like who knows if he's had to really experience like the dark side of. I mean, especially for Hope, it's like for so long, like they've had that comfort of like you 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 realize the dangers of the world, but you never really know like you all that like her Felix Elton Silas like what they went through and just like just being back with her family, wanting that so much, you know. That's what really. Uh, gets to her uh speaking of silas too uh dennis does reference silas but he doesn't call silas by name he's like yeah there's a big guy here who's pretty quiet that's all so i like i don't think uh i don't think huck put that together like why would you like in the description that could be a description for anybody so why would you immediately associate that with being silas not because i can't remember she's the one that was talking to her mom about how to handle the whole silas thing so she does know but maybe she just not let because i think she's the one that was suggesting to do something different with silas or maybe because because at the very least like if she knows not less that decision was kind of made behind her back so she doesn't know that dennis has silas or she does know and she's just not letting dennis know that there's a connection there i don't know Either way, um, on top of all of that, you know, for a hope, you know, it's not just, you know, her dad wishing he could do more. It's like, I wish I could distract you from the distraction because a distraction on its own isn't enough because it's like, because you know you're distracting yourself. But if you can distract yourself from the distraction, then you, you know, it kind of adds like an extra layer of a buffer between like all you and your worries. So she meets up with Mason and the others and they're just kind of celebrating, obviously, uh, you know, kind of saying their RIPs to like, you know, Omaha, their sister city. And obviously he talks about the fact, the fact is of being like from the CRM and the CR and like the whole Portland thing of like, they get to go to go home two weeks out of the year, but other people it's like, yeah, they are not fortunate enough. Or maybe it was specifically the people from Portland. I don't remember. Like, cause I think from this being from the CR, he gets to go home every two weeks, but then like people from Portland, it's never clear when they're going to get home. So, but then I'm just trying to forget they're playing Jenga and everything, but obviously being there, like all the fun and just like stuff getting knocked over, it just made her think about the tire situation from season one. So she's, she's reminiscing about all that. And it's just kind of just like, how can I live this normal life? How can I be okay when I don't know if my family's okay? So she confronts Huck about it. It's like, did you, it's been days. Like we don't know anything about Felix or Iris. Like I need you to find him. You said it's better for you to find us to find them, but we can't let like the CRM find them first because then they'll start questioning what does Felix and Iris know? Like, so it's best that we get to them first. It's like, we need to do this. Like, I just need to know. I want my family back, you know, especially because the sooner you bring them back, the less, less questions my dad is asking. Because my dad's going to start staring shit up with all these questions. Like, because he already doesn't trust you. You also need to take me because the moment you go there, like, they're not going to listen to anything you have to say if you go by yourself. Uh, especially Felix. He's going to want to kill you. So initially, Huck was like, yeah, let's wait till tomorrow because she had dinner plans. But being around uh, Dennis, whatever the case may be, she's like, because for her, his mishap led to some good stuff. It's like, because of your mishap, I ended up on my mission and I ended up helping people. She's like, I ended up saving five people's lives who wouldn't have been alive if I hadn't been. So it's like, yes, your mishap, was it the wrong thing? Did it work out in the end? Yes, I will eventually get to the point that I can be okay with it, like despite everything happening. But at the end of the day, like I just can't be with you right now. Now, I don't know whether it's just purely from the sake of like, right, what I'm about to get mixed up in. I think it's just like, who can I, like, she does care about them. Like the people, like Felix, Iris, Elton, Silent, like she does feel bad about it all. And she tries not to because it was her mission, but that's the problem of going undercover. Like you stay under long enough that you get accustomed to that life being around these people. And so doing what she did, she does feel bad about it. It's not like her, con like she does have, there is, she, it's not like she's a robot. She does feel things like her mom might come off a bit like a robot, but she's a little bit more pragmatic than, um, hook is. So for her, I think it's just, I think it's kind of a similar thing of just like, she's distracted herself with this whole dentist thing, but you know, it doesn't erase like her own guilt. And I think it's like, here I am living this life and trying to pretend like everything's okay, but what happened happened. And also what happened outside also happened. So like, I, I try to have to make this up not only to myself, but hope as well. 
So she sneaks Hope out, but the 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 lady that was at the she's like, oh yeah, like your mom. Oh, she's a great woman. It's like, yep, yeah, she sure is. But it's like, yeah, your position, like while you were out, like all like you not know, not on active duty, I kind of took over your position. So Huck is kind of lying about like, oh, let me, I, I'm on a secret mission. So boom. But um, the guard, she's looking very suspicious, so she knows something's up. So I'm sure that's going to arise a lot of questions as Huck, Hope, and some CRM people, well, I think that's just some nearby guards roll into the perimeter, and obviously Elton's nearby with Asha, and then obviously Iris sees Hope, but you have your boy Percy seeing Huck too, and it's just like, oh, the, she did everything, like, not only she tried to kill me, she brutally murdered my uncle, like, yeah, he's got knife ready for, you know, but it's like, right, doing that's just going to cause more problems for everyone, so... We'll see how this all plays out. Because at that time, uh, Will and uh, Felix were out. So they didn't even know about Elton and uh, Percy yet. So who knows if they're back now. That will probably complicate things more if the both of them show up. That'd be a whole hassle. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm also interested to see if that information is going to come up where Iris is like, the CRM, they're the ones behind Omaha. It's like, Huck will be like, what, what are you talking about? She, she, cause she has no idea. And that's probably going to like, maybe Hope's been thinking that same thing too, but who knows? Maybe only Iris has come to that conclusion. Maybe not. Uh, but I'm definitely interested to see like now that they're there and a lot of, uh, tensions are running high, like where all this is going to take us going forward into the next episode. Uh, what information is going to be revealed? What's just going to happen next in general? Uh, but uh, till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.